Hi Christ with your kids, hi Christ with your families. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are keeping safe. And remember to always wear your mask when you're indoors. I'm at home and I'm worshiping at home today. So I'm going to take my mask down. So I'm so glad you guys are able to join us for today's Sunday worship. At this time, we're going to do our introduction question. I want you guys to turn to one another and discuss something special that you're looking forward to, a special day that you're looking forward to. It could be a birthday, a holiday, a special day. And why is that special? And what are you going to do on that special day? All right? I'm going to give 30 seconds. I want you guys to take this time. Begin! Welcome back. I hope you guys had a good time discussing a day that you're looking forward to, a special day. For me, that special day is coming up very, very soon. That's Thursday, September 9th. And you guys know what that date is? That date is my birthday. It's my birthday on September 9th. And I'm probably going to take the day off of work. I'm going to ask somebody to make me some waffles and bacon. I'm going to probably play some golf in the morning. And I'm probably going to have a big birthday party on Saturday. I'm going to, let's see, smoke some beef ribs and pork ribs, invite some friends over and have a nice party. And I got all these Nerf buttons from Facebook Marketplace. I got like 10 of these and I'm going to have a Nerf War party with my friends. Well, probably Jackson's friends, but I'm gonna have a Nerf War party for my birthday. And I'm gonna ask my best friend to buy me a pair of new shoes for my birthday gift. Hint, hint, Sonny. Hint, hint. And I cannot wait, cannot wait, and cannot wait. And sometimes waiting for something feels very exciting but also very difficult and I'm sure you guys also talked about a very special day and waiting for that special day it's gonna take long but there's something to look forward to out we have hope in that special day right and you are wishing that that day will come sooner right come faster and as Christians there's also something that we're all waiting for that we're all looking forward to and that's when Jesus returns back to us. Today we're going to learn about John's vision about when Jesus returns back to us and what that's going to look like. And Jesus will return, destroy evil, and make all things new. Boys and girls, Christ Central families, I pray and hope that you guys have a blessed this Sunday worship. And I'm looking forward to being closer to Jesus as we learn more about His return to us. Alright, I'll see you guys soon. Hello CCSC, how are you doing? Pastor Harold here. I trust that all of you have received an email. And if you haven't read it by now, it is vitally important that you read it carefully. I'll refer you back to it. But I continually want to echo the prayer that's written here from the outset of 3 John verse 2. This is the prayer that your shepherds and your elders and pastors, as well as this is, represents our hearts for all of you who are members of CCSC. It reads, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul, as it goes well with your soul. I hope you do know that the gospel of Jesus Christ means that not only did Jesus die and give his life to cleanse us from all of our sins, he not only died to cleanse our souls, but his love and his ministry is holistic. And so should ours be for one another. Holistic gospel love. That means we care not only for your spiritual health, 
we care, especially in these pandemic times, with all the challenges it presents for your mental, psychological, emotional, relational, and financial health. Having said that, I want to share with you that this week we discovered that uh, another significant exposure to the COVID virus uh, uh, happened uh, to a number of our staff and leaders and pastors. And this is most unfortunate. I don't think it's under anyone's control and it's no one's fault. And yes, you are correct. If you've been following along, this is twice in the last month. And so an immediate response to that, our COVID strategic team, which is comprised of elders and campus pastors, Pastor Jimmy, Jenny on our staff, and then along with ongoing deliberations, pretty much around the clock and discussions and prayers with the rest of the staff and myself, we have come to this very difficult decision. And that diffi difficult decision being, we have decided to suspend the next, at least the next four Sunday in-person worship services. Uh, this means at least four Sundays so that it allow us to assess the trajectory of COVID, what's been going on in this fourth wave. And also truth be told, although I so am humbled and appreciate the volunteers and leaders and staff that have been making in-person worship services uh, so far, possible and effective, uh, we've also reached the point that we are really sorely lacking in some personnel and volunteers to continue this uh, in an effective and viable way. So for the next four Sundays, we will be offering a live stream. Maybe some of it will be pre-recorded. But I do think that the four Sundays, which I am not happy about or nobody would rejoice over, that this decision, however, is the best exercise of our collective best judgment at this juncture. It is an exercise of our collective care and love for all of your well-being in the long run. Four weeks is a chunk of time, but four weeks is a very short chunk of time. And I would ask for your utmost again prayers and understanding and patience and grace. And we welcome any feedback or questions or concerns that you may have. Uh, some of you may recall when we first uh, went to this alternative of offering worship services online, and you know that this is a temporary means out of safe and healthy concerns. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to go back to it for now, temporarily. Uh, you may recall that we as a church are somewhat late adopters. And so we were not the first in line to transition to online worship services. Uh, the reason we were late adopters is because uh, I am surrounded <laughs> by people who are immensely thorough, considerate, and thoughtful. I cannot tell you enough how much uh, our leadership uh, thinks through uh, all possible types of contingencies and scenarios. And we welcome more that maybe we may not be aware of up to this point. But being late adopters at the initial point of transitioning to online services actually means we're going to be early on this one. Because we want to be considerate, thoughtful, and actually proactive and protective of any further significant exposure happening ahead, especially for you, uh, our local church here at CCSA, whom we love, whom we love. This decision is one of the more difficult ones we've had to make. We are trying to balance and all kinds of other factors and values that we do have at the church. But again, not one person or event or cause uh, led us to this conclusion, but I think it is a uh, collective decision with all kinds of factors considered. As I said from the outset, our prayer and our vision for our church is because of the gospel, insofar as it's possible, we are most concerned with your overall well-being, with you, our members, our staff and leaders, and anyone who would come and volunteers. We love you. We will continue to pray for you. I would ask you to continue to do the same. Thank you for listening. And I know that God, who is always up to something, redemptive, glorious, good for his people. Even in this short time where it may feel like in so many ways a setback yet, uh, yet again, 
Uh, I was reminded at our prayer meeting, uh, as we've been going through Missions Month, uh, one of our missionaries was sharing that, you know, these seemingly shut doors, these sometimes even tragic, awful setbacks, for instance, like in the nation of Af Afghanistan, where we have the second fastest growing church and the reports are that the Taliban really go, is going door to door, hunting for those who are Christians who are registered or those who have uh, converted and professed Jesus as Lord. Um, missionaries that we support happily share though, however, as those doors are being shut to maybe the Western nations, um, they actually believe and pray that the doors are opening all the more for Chinese house churches uh, to have even more access and more opportunity for the gospel to be spread. You know, I was humbled and reminded in closing, the mission of God cannot be stopped. The gospel cannot be thwarted. The spirit of God is powerfully and lovingly always at work. So I ask you to trust in that with me. We do aim to get back into full in-person worship service services, because biblically and practically, that is ideal. But I ask that you would bear with us now and continue to lift one another up and minister to one another as best as we can uh, for the gospel's sake. Thanks for listening.
Hi, Christ Central kids. Now we will be going over the Westminster Shorter Catechism. We're going over questions number 39, 40, and 41. The Westminster Shorter Catechism all comes from the Word of God and is a summary of biblical doctrines that help us understand and memorize what we believe in as Christians. And it all comes in question and answer form. So we're going over questions number 39, 40, and 41. I'll read the questions one time and let's respond by reading the answers two times to help us understand and meditate on the answers. If you need help reading the answers out loud, grab someone by you to help you read them. Are you guys ready? All right. Question number 39. What is the duty that God requires of mankind? The duty which God requires of mankind is obedience to his revealed will. One more time. The duty which God requires of mankind is obedience to his revealed will. Question number 40. What did God first reveal to the mankind as a rule of their obedience? Let's respond. The rule that God first revealed to the mankind for obedience was the moral law. The rule that God first revealed to the mankind for obedience was the moral law. Question number 41. Where is the moral law given in summary form? The moral law is summarized in the Ten Commandments. One last time. The moral law is summarized in the Ten Commandments. We can only understand our duty to God when we first learn and know about God and know who he is and know that he has saved us from our sins. When we learn, we love God and are thankful to him. And we truly understand that we should obey him. The first thing that God has revealed to us was the moral law, the Ten Commandments, rules that govern our behavior to tell us what we should do and obey and what we should not do and not obey as it is revealed in God's will. Later, God gave us the Bible, which tells us everything we need to know about God, about salvation, and how we can live to glorify him. For today's Bible reading, we're going to continue in the book of Revelation, but we're going to go to chapter 21 towards the end of the book. And this is where John writes about the new heaven and the new earth, what it's going to look like. All right, so get your Bibles, turn to Revelation, back of the Bible, last book of the Bible, Revelation. We're going to go chapter 21. And 21 is after chapter 20, before chapter 22. And we're going to read the whole chapter, 27 verses. And we're going to do responsive reading. That means I'm going to read the odd verses, and I'm going to ask you guys to read the even verses. All right, a couple more seconds. Revelations chapter 21, verses 1 through 27. In today's passage, we're going to be reading about John's vision and what John wrote about, on, about what Jesus' return is going to look like and how he'll make all things new and what the new heaven and new earth is going to look like, all right? This is very exciting. All right, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. I'm going to read the odds and you're going to read the evens. <clears throat> this is God's word. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. Verse 2. Verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look! God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He 
He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Verse 7. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Verse 9. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plates came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Verse 11. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. Verse 13. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates and its walls. Verse 17. The angel measured the wall using human measurement and it was 144 cubit thick. The fountains of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first fountain was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, and the fourth emerald. The twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each gate made a sing each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold as pure as transparent glass. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light and the lamp is its lamp. On no day will its gate ever be shut, for there will be no night there. And we're gonna read verse 27 together. Three, two, Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but those whose name are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. This is God's word. John had a vision from God of the end of time. Whoa. After the Lamb... Jesus opened the scroll. God judged the earth to destroy evil. John heard a large crowd of people praising God and rejoicing. John wrote about what he saw. John saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth was gone. He also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven. He heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God will live with his people. They will be his people, and he will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death 
will no longer exist. Sadness, crying, and pain will no longer exist. One of the angels carried John to a great and high mountain. The angel showed John the holy city. It was shining with God's glory. The foundations of the city wall had every type of precious stone. The city street was made of pure gold, as clear as glass. John did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord and the Lamb were the city's temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. The glory of God gives light to the city, and there is no darkness. The city is safe and clean. Nothing unclean is in the city, and no one will do wrong things in the city. Only those whose names are in the Lamb's Book of Life will enter the city. The angels showed John the river of living water. It sparkled like crystal and flowed down from God's throne, down the middle of the wide city street. The tree of life was on both sides of the river, and it produced twelve kinds of fruit. God's throne will be in the city. God's servants will see his face, and they will worship him. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Jesus said, Listen, I am coming soon. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Jesus is the one who says that all of these things will happen. He is coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus promised to come back to earth soon. When Jesus returns, those who trust in Jesus will be with him and enjoy him forever. God will undo every bad thing caused by sin. No more death, no more pain, no more tears. Jesus is making all things new. So in today's Bible reading, we read about John's vision about what the new heaven and new earth is going to look like. Remember, Jesus gave John a vision and he wrote this vision down and that vision is the book of Revelation. And John's word helps us imagine the incredible beauty and perfection of what God's new world is going to look like. Now, do you guys remember some of those descriptions that we read? It's in Revelation chapter 21, verse 18 and 21. All right, let's get your Bible. Let's read some of the descriptions, all right, to help us remember what the new heaven and new earth might look like. Revelation chapter 21. And we're going to read starting from verse 18. And remember, let's use our imagination. And as I read this, let's imagine what heaven might look like. The wall was made of jasper, the city of pure gold and pure as glass. The fountains of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first fountain was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelfth gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. And the great street of the city was gold, as pure as transparent glass. Wow. I can't wait to see that. I can only use my imagination on what that looks like. See, John wrote that these streets are going to be made out of gold, right? Gold. I have these gold necklaces that I took from my wife. Look here. It's going to be, the streets are going to be made out of gold. Gold's going to be everywhere. It's going to be so pure that the Bible said, it's going to be so pure that the Bible said it's going to be like transparent glass. I'm having a hard time putting this on, but I want to show you all my gold jewel. All right. Because heaven is going to be filled with gems, beautiful gems. Oh, do you guys like these necklaces that I have? All right. But not only that, the walls are going to be made of gemstones, every single precious stone. And the fountains are going to be also made of these gems. So I have jasp, 
Paper, Sapphire, Emeralds, Onyx, not the Pokemon, but the stone, Rubies, Turquoise, and Pearls, all different types of precious stone. Could you use your imagination what heaven might look like? Hopefully it doesn't look like this because that's not pretty. But heaven's going to be greater than this. It's going to be more beautiful, more grand. It's going to be perfect. And the, the Bible says that the city needs no sun or no moon. Can you imagine that? Because God's glory will shine so bright that we don't need light. That we don't need the sun or the moon. See, these are just descriptions um, to help us imagine, to help us picture what it looked like. And they actually might not literally look like that, but you know, I don't think heaven's only going to have gold streets. I don't think heaven is only going to have fountains made out of precious stones. There's going to be other beautiful things that we can only imagine, right? But these ideas, these images help us know that heaven's going to be perfect. And God will provide a perfect place for His people. And the most important thing, the most important thing is not the gold, it's not the gems, right? The most important thing is that Jesus will return, destroy evil, and make all things new. There's going to be no sadness, no crying, no pain, no evil, darkness, or anything that could come into the city. Again, no sadness, no crying, no pain, no evil, no darkness will ever be allowed into the city. No sin, no anger, no guilt, no shame, no fear. None of that is allowed in heaven. And in heaven, the Lord, our Lord, our Savior will reign forever and ever. And that's a promise that Jesus made. And Jesus will return is our hope, the hope that we have in our life. And our minds, we have to set our minds for that perfect promise. We have to look forward to that perfect promise and the future that we have with Jesus. Christ Angel Kids, what is the hope of the church? This is our big picture question. What is the hope of the church? The answer is, the church looks forward to Jesus' return and He will make all things new. One more time. The church looks forward to Jesus' return when He makes all things new. And Christ and kids, God didn't leave us here just to wait in this broken world for no reason. We have work to do. We wait for Jesus' return. And we cannot just sit and do nothing and just wait. Right? We have work to do. We have to love and obey Jesus. We have to teach others to love and obey Him. And in our current broken world, we cannot just wait and do nothing. We have to show hints of what Jesus, who Jesus is. We have to show people what the perfect world is going to look like. And while we wait for Jesus to return, we share the gospel. We tell every single person, as many people as we can, about the gospel message. We love our neighbors. And we treat them like we would treat ourselves. We will love on them just the way that Jesus loved us. And we live in a way that glorifies God. We live in a way that glorifies God. Boys and girls, we don't wait and do nothing until Jesus returns. We have things to do. Share the gospel, love our neighbors, and live in a way that glorifies God. Jesus promised to come back to this earth soon. Jesus promised that He will destroy sin, and He did that. And He also promised that He will make all things new. And when Jesus returns, those who trust in Jesus will be with Him forever and ever. And enjoy Him forever and ever. God will undo every bad thing that sin has caused. No more death, no more pain, no more tears. And Jesus, boys and girls, Jesus will make all things new. So let's have our hope in that. Let's look forward to that day. And while we wait, let's live in a way that glorifies Him. We could do that, boys and girls. We could do that because we are a church united. We have the Holy Spirit with us. We have God's 
Bible to give us instructions. I can't wait to be in heaven, to be with Him, to be with one other, another, to worship and glorify Him, our Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Let's put our hands together. Let's close our eyes. Let's bow our heads. And dear Heavenly Father, awesome God, we thank you so much for sharing this vision of what the new earth and the new heaven look like. Showing us that there will be no pain, crying, or suffering in this new heaven. Because we know that the blood of Jesus Christ destroys sin. We know that you will come and make all things new. That's the promise that we have. That's the hope that we have. So as we wait, Holy Spirit, help us to live in a way that we could glorify you. Help us to share and continue to share the gospel message about what Jesus Christ did for us the love that you poured into us. And Lord, we ask that you continue to be with us this day. We thank you for this time. And may we continue to live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye, guys. And Christ Central Kids, I want to remind you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, dearly loved by God and precious in His sight. And I pray that you continue to grow as Jesus did, in wisdom of God's Word, and in faith in Jesus, and in friendship with the people around you. We are continuing our Bible memory verse from Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Why do we memorize Bible verses? Why is it important? We do this to remember God's word in our hearts and so that we can share it with others who don't know him. Let's recite the verse together. Ready, begin. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. Now, do you all remember the motions for this verse? Remember Pastor Eric went over them last week? Let's go ahead and recite the verse and do the motions together. Okay, ready? Begin. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. Good job, guys. Okay, now let's try reciting it with the motions with our eyes closed. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing it this way, you can keep your eyes open and still follow along. But if you do want to try it this way, we're going to close our eyes. We're going to recite the verse with the motions. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's try this. Ready? With your eyes closed, begin. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven which said, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of, a, of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. Good job, guys. How did you guys do? Now, I hope you guys can keep practicing this verse so much so that you can recite it without looking at the words and you can recite it with your eyes closed. Now, it's important to keep God's word memorized in our hearts so that one day when you come across someone who doesn't know about Jesus, you can share the gospel with them. I hope you guys have fun doing this. Revelation 11.
For today's activity, there are two parts. For the first part, I want you to think about what your family does to prepare before a guest comes over to your house. Let's make a list together. All right, I have my whiteboard here. I'm gonna write it out so we can all look at it together. So some ways we prepare before a guest comes over is, think about ways that your family prepares before a guest comes. For my family, we clean the house. All right, and some things that we clean in our house are, let's see, the bathroom. You don't want your guests to use a dirty bathroom, right? The bathroom, how else do you guys clean? How about vacuuming? Vacuum all the dust. Another way of cleaning is putting your toys away, putting your things away, right? All right, so for cleaning, I feel like that's pretty good. Now, what's another way we prepare before a guest comes? There's something very important we prepare before a guest comes. Do you guys know what it is? Food, we prepare food, right? And in order to prepare food, we need to go get the food from the market. So you go to the market and then you prepare the food. All right, this is a good list here of things that we do to prepare before a guest comes. Now we do a lot to prepare, right? When we do these preparations, our guests feel more comfortable. Today we learned that Jesus urged the church to be prepared for his return. For part two, I want you all to think about what we can do to be prepared for Jesus' return. As Christians, we believe that God's word, the Bible, is true. And today we learned that the Bible tells us that Jesus will be coming soon and that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. One thing we can do to be prepared for Jesus' return is by reading the Bible every day. Because we believe the Bible is God's word, we can learn more about him and we can learn how to live as followers of him before his return. So you can grab a piece, a blank piece of paper in your house, any blank piece of paper and something to write with and make a list by yourself or with a family member on what you can do to be prepared for Jesus' return. Now, if you have some time after, you can also draw pictures of the things that are on your list. Let's start this list together. As I mentioned before, one way we can be prepared for Jesus' return is by reading the Bible every day. So I'm going to write that as my first one on my list. Read Bible every day. And then I'm going to draw a Bible. There you go, that's the first thing on my list. Now, after you've added more to this list and you've drew, drawn some pictures, you can tape it up somewhere in your house where you can look at it every day as a reminder. Now, if any of you would like to share a photo of your completed list, you can have your parents send it to my email at priscillaquok at ChristCentralSC.com. I would love to see what you all list out.
And by doing this activity, I hope you all can remember to live every day preparing yourselves for Jesus' return. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Hi, Christ Central Kids. Let's end today's worship service with the Lord's Prayer. Ready? Begin. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today your daily bread. Forgive us of our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.